Hello, welcome to Dundrolls Podcast. I'm your host Justin. Today we're reviewing Inside Straight, a wild cards novel, which is written by a team of writers, including George R. R. Martin. Right? You have like writers like Daniel Abraham and um, Melinda M. Snodgrass, Carrie Vaughn. Caroline Spector, Jonathan jo- Josh Miller, Ian Tegrellis, and Stephen Lee, right? So yeah, this this is like the 18th novel in the Wild Cards series, which if people don't know what Wild Cards is, basically, um, George R. R. Martin in 1986 with um, Melinda R. Snod- Snodgrass, or however you pronounce her name, uh, created this uh, superhero book universe where different writers would create stories with uh, superheroes um, called wild cards. Which wild cards are basically basically this takes place in an alternate Earth where in 1940 an alien invasion happened during World War II, which released this alien virus. Which killed 90% of everybody in New York, but like uh, 9% that survived turned into Jokers, which Jokers are um, mutated humans, right? Which some of them have superpowers, and then 1% turn into Aces. A lot of playing card uh, like memes going on here. Aces are normal people, normal looking people with superpowers, right? And on, on the cover of the book, you see one of them. This is the German Ace Lohengrin, who has the Ace superpower to create, um, create armor and so, a sword out of ghost steel, which can cut through anything and can protect his, um, uh, body from harm, right? So the story of this book, right, is that there's um, there's a reality TV show called American Hero, where aces and jokers uh, go to compete to be the be American hero, the American hero who who will win a uh, million dollars, right? And they have to compete with each other. It's kind of like a combination of Big Brother and and the Survivor, right? Which they all form into teams and compete against each other, right? While that that is going on, there there was a uh, British spy called Lilith, who, who is a teleporter who went to Egypt to assassinate the Caliph, right? And while she was there. She, she blamed the Jokers living in Egypt that, uh, and uh, blamed them for the, the assassination attempt. So while, so while the American Hero reality show is going on, Jokers in, uh, Jokers in Egypt, which are mostly people with like animal heads that are like you know reminiscent of the Egyptian gods, there's even like a cult. Calling themselves in Egypt, calling themselves the Living Gods, who kind of masquerade as the Egyptians' gods reborn. Some of them are even living in Vegas, right? Um, and the, and these jokers are these innocent people are getting massacred in Egypt, right? And uh, one of them, you know, one of them, the daughter of like. Uh, of uh, one of the living gods sends her daughter to American Hero to convince um, the, this a- this former ace Jonathan Fortune to uh, t- to find the special amulet his mother his mother has who was also uh, an an ace well she's like a Joker right she has like uh, she's a beautiful woman with uh, white w- wings right. And, like, you know, he gets this amulet that he used to have powers, but he lost them in, like, a, a earlier novel. And he gets the powers to turn into a giant mountain lion 
who can breathe fire, right? And he go and he goes to Egypt to defend the Jokers from the Caliph and his army, right? Other other uh, contestants on American Hero also go along with him, right? So th that's so like yeah, like the a big portion of the book is like. All the people from the discard pile going uh, fighting alongside Jonathan Fortune to save Jokers from getting, getting massacred. Where they have to fight like other aces, uh, other Egyptian aces that are work that want to kill the Jokers, working for the Caliph, which is the Jinn, who is this giant genie who can like steal, who can like steal like. Uh, wild card powers. You have this other guy called Bahir, who is this teleporter with a golden scimitar, right? So other characters that go along with Jonathan Fortune uh, is the journalist uh, Jonathan Hive, who can turn into a swarm of bugs, who he uses his power like to spy on people. You have Curveball, who's this chick who can like, um, who kind of has like gambit powers, where she can charge up objects. And throw them at people, and like it, it can explode. You have Drummer Boy, who's this six armed uh, drummer with tattoos, right? You have um, R Rusty, who is this iron guy uh, who can ru uh, rust metal objects with his hands, who got kicked off the show because uh, Stuntman, the one of the black contestants accused him of calling him the N-word, which he turns out he didn't actually do that, right? Um, other characters are Earth Witch, who's like a Latina, who can like, you know, um, who has powers like Terra from Teen, Teen Times, where she can control the Earth. And um, you have like the Mexican luchador, King Cobalt. You have a guy named Hard Hat, who can generate like, uh, glowing eye beams, uh, steel beams, right? So yeah, uh, I gotta say, I, I love, I, I gotta say, despite the fact that they were constantly changing perspectives, right? I, I got, overall, I kind of liked the book, but my problem with the book is that, oh my god, like a lot, there was a lot of they kept sh s switching writers, and because they kept switching writers, there's like continu continuity errors. Like Jonathan Hive, who it says is created by Daniel Abram, cannot speak in his swarm mode, where that's where he's like controlling, where he becomes different bugs. In one of the stories, he can talk, and it's not written by Daniel Abram. And there's like a scene in. Daniel Abraham's story where he tries to talk and the bugs just buzz uh, uh, bug, uh, buzz louder, right? He can't talk, he can't he even says man, I would talk but I, I but I, I don't have like lungs <laughs> or vocal cords, right? So there's continuity errors like that. Um, the, the book is also very R-rated. There's sex scenes, there's vulgar language, um, there's vulgar language. Some people might consider the book woke. I don't consider a book woke just because it has, you know, minority characters and gay characters, right? I consider something woke when you make, like, you know, the, the like, progressive kind of characters victims and make uh, victims... At the expense of making, like, you know, let's say, it's like, straight, normal straight guy, people, like, look bad, right? Which they kind of did with Bubbles and Stuntman's character, right? Where S Bubbles is a lesbian, right? Which, uh, who was hiding the fact that she was a lesbian from her friend Tiffany, who she has a crush on, who gets, who betrays her in the show. And then, like, you know... You have this scene where, like, oh, Ink, who's, like, you know, uh, le a lesbian, like, uh, assistant on the show, tells her, oh, yeah, all your gay f friend, uh, fans 
love you for being open. When she wasn't open at all. She was only open after she got kicked off the show and, and hooked up with the uh, Inc. Who's like the Japanese-American like uh, assistant, right? Yeah, uh, I would say I was surprised what they did with Jamal's character. Because like Jamal was this like, um, who's stuntman by the way. Um, I, I was surprised that they made him, like, the villain. <laughs> like, kind of like the villain on American Hero, where he, he was this uh, kind of cool guy. And then he, he, because his powers are defensive, where he, 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 he has, like, a healing factor, he can't really do, like, spectacular things. And one of the, uh, uh, characters on the show, Bravehawk, who's a Native American guy, tells him, hey, to play the ra race card to win. And then he does that, right? So he, he kind of, his character pulls like a like you know three like not three sixty uh one eighty, right? And it's, it 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 like um, screws him over in the end. He wins, but at that point nobody gives a shit about American Hero anymore because uh, all the uh, all the like cool all the discards went to Egypt to 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 fight and save the Jokers who were getting massacred there. So yeah, that, yeah. So that, there's continuity issues. A lot of the stories where you have female writers writing the, um, writing the like you know the um, the chapters. A lot of those stories sucked because it was all romance and melodrama, 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 right? And it was like, dude, like, and also partially boring, right? And like, I, I might get. Accused of being sexist, but I've read books with female writers, with women writers that I liked, like the Dragonlance uh, novel, the first one. I still haven't read the other two, but I will. But yeah, like those those chapters were boring. Not to say there weren't any bad chapters by like the male writers, but like dude, like a lot of those chapters sucked, and there were very. I I I also wanted to complain that all oh, like. Um, I also wanted to give, give the book a dislike because of, like, some of the unlikable characters in the book that kind of ruin it. But then they, some of those unlikable characters do get kind of an up, like, uh, do, do get, like, a, a comeuppance near the end of the book, right? Yeah, so, like, if I were to give this book a rating, it's a 4 out of 10. The book is, the book is only good... I would say, like, at the end, like, one third, like, at, at the end, two thirds of the book kind of sucks, and, like, one of the cool characters, who you think is the main character, Jonathan, like, uh, jo Jonathan Hive, I, I thought they kicked him off right away off the show, and he was a pretty cool, I wouldn't say he was a pretty cool, cool character, he was in a lot of the book, but it was like, I really liked his perspective on things, and like, you know, he, he was a good POV character to go through the book, uh, the book, right, also, I thought it was kind of bullshit, you have two characters, main characters named Jonathan in the book, could, could we not have fucking, had one of the two, two Jonathans in the book be, Hey, you're John, he's Johnny, or something like that. So it, it made the book very confusing when there's like two Jonathans. You're like, okay, which one is talking? The guy who turns into bugs or the guy who turns into a female lion who breathes fire, man? Like, but yeah, man. Uh, other than that, I, I am somewhat interested in this series and might want to check out more, but like... Yeah, I was not a huge fan of this book, but beautiful cover, by the way. Also, the George R. Mar Martin story in the book Crusader. That was a very weird. That was a very weird story. Well, it was good except for one thing, where it, it it's a the story is like a dramatization of um of. Lohengrin saving, like, refugees from, like, um, from jackals, which are basically, like, you know, remnants of the Caliph's army who's going around killing jokers, right? And in that story, he writes that, like, they have, like, the family that, that gets attacked has, like, a pretty, 
12 to 13-year-old daughter, and when Lo when it's revealed that that story was bullshit, and Lohengrin's like, what's with the the 12 year old uh, girl why didn't you just make the mother pretty like dude we had the 12 year old 13 year old girl was uh introducing like sex appeal to the story what the fuck is that <laughs> what what the fuck you have underage characters supposed to give sex appeal what the fuck george r, r. martin man that is fucked up and people like, he, he would have, like, you know, underage, like, uh, sex scenes in the Game of Thrones books, and people would defend it saying, oh, it was historically accurate for, like, a fantasy, when the fucking thing is supposed to be a fantasy series. So what the fuck is that? That is some pedo shit right there. And, it, yeah, I, uh, George R. R. Martin is very sus. I can serve sus now. Okay, that, that was fucked up, right? Yeah, uh, I am thinking of checking out the first book, but like, what the fuck, man? George R. R. Martin, that, that was that that was very fucking cr weird and creepy, right? So yeah, our next book review is going to be we're going back to fantasy. We're gonna re review the the Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan, the, the third book in the Wheel of Time series, right? Yeah. And, uh, though, I don't think I'm probably going to be able to finish this next week, since I might be, f uh, starting up a new job next week. Um, they're supposed to call me. And it's only going to be part-time, but, like, I, I, well, I already have one part-time job, and I can't quit that job, because, obviously, I need the money. So, I'm going to be working two part-time jobs. I don't know if I'm going to have time to finish this book within a week, considering it's, like, 800 pages. Yeah. But if we can, we will. Also, because um, because of the unfortunate passing of uh, George Perez, I decided, hey, I'm finally going to get off my ass and review those Marv Wolfman George Perez books, which uh, not all of them are by written by Mar Marv Wolfman, but the, they have art by George Perez. So we're going to review Crisis on Infinite Earths. Infinity Gauntlet, which has art by George Perez, if I remember correctly. Pretty sure it's art by George Perez. That does look like George Perez's art. And then we're all, for, but first we're going to review this. Right, the new uh, Teen Titans Annual 1, which I got last year. 